Ray Ray don't give a rat's butt about no hood. He run me off the set. Dig this, he run loco off the set. And I've been Hoover Deuce for years. He got himself a new house for Ray Ray. A new car for Ray Ray. Hell, Ray Ray even got your boy out there stealing car stereos. What? Lil J Rock his star. I gotta go, Bobby. It ain't safe in here. What? I gotta go with the deuce. My channel is Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss South Central. Now this movie is from 1992 and it stars Glenn Palmer. Now before we get into all things, this is an OG call and I'm keeping them. I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm going to give you guys a moment to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss. It was really great to go back and watch this movie as like a full-blown grown-up. You see so many other things that you would never notice beforehand about this movie. Go back, 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 back. have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the video i have to give a shout out to the person who paid for and requested this film so if you happen to owe me 15 boxes of smoke it's not because of me it's because of this person right here thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content now getting into this movie, this movie was written and directed by Steven Anderson. And just like so many directors that I have spoken on before, this is really the only movie that he got a chance to do. Did he do some other movies? Maybe a couple, but it wasn't anything to the caliber of this one. And he stuck to being more on the producer side and that was more in the early 90s. Currently, we really don't have anything from this writer and director, which is really unfortunate. From what I could see reading into this film, it doesn't seem like we would have even gotten this film if it wasn't for Oliver Stone really pushing and producing this movie in the first place. I also didn't know that this movie was based off a book written by a black writer by the name of Donald Bakir. It chronicles LA gang culture all the way from the early 70s to the mid 80s. And we have it based around well-known gang members like Tukey Williams, Raymond Washington. All of these things were pulled from to create this movie. Giving the movie this deep sense of authenticity. Now, however, this movie was no boys in the hood of its time. It was not any type of successful then. It really underperformed at the box office and really didn't find much success until later on, you know, when we went and got the DVD and watched it being rerun a billion times on BET. Like, <laughs> BET was wearing South Central out. I swear, every time I cut on BET, I saw Bobby Deuce Triple O Triple O getting out. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but it was really appreciated much later which is really unfortunate that it didn't receive any accolades because this is really a great film with a great message that we don't get anymore. We rarely get a message for the time for the youth speaking directly to of all people black men and black sons. We ain't getting that shit no more. Now we start off the movie here getting to know OG Triple OG Bobby Johnson getting out of the detention center like what a difference a day makes. I never knew watching this movie in the past that Bobby Johnson was supposed to be pretty much a teenager along with Carol. Everybody looks grown as fuck in the face. How was I supposed to know that? I had no idea until like going to watch it. Like, oh, he's getting out of like a youth detention center. Like he's in a juvenile center. This is pretty much a kid. I had no clue that he was supposed to be a teenager and Carol was supposed to represent babies having babies. She was supposed to be like, uh, what? Where? <laughs> Before we jump into that, I would just like to spend like all of two seconds on 
Glenn Plummer as an actor. He is one of those actors who has really had a strong, consistent career, but has rarely gotten any praise. You see him all the time pop up in so many things from, you know, movies to television. You may see his face, but don't really know his name. But he has been acting for a very long time, all the way from movies like this, from, you know, the 80s, colors, stuff like trash, like showgirls. Like, he is really a seasoned actor and probably, unfortunately, the most significant name from this film. The entire cast here really didn't go on to do a whole lot, which is really unfortunate. But this was his first time really being able to, like, low-key only time, because from what I can see, he has solely been designated to supporting roles. But this is the first and only time I feel like we got to see him lead and carry a movie. And I feel like he did a really great, memorable job. Now, immediately as we are introduced to not only Bobby, but Loco, Bear, and Ray Ray, all of Ray Ray's negative ass energy that was coming off of him clearly flew over my head as a kid. Ray Ray was selfish from the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> I had never noticed how much and exactly how strategically he used OG Bobby Johnson. With Ray Ray being the mouth and the leader, Bear being the muscle, and Loco just pretty much being a goddamn animated Looney Tune, I'm gonna kill you, fool! <laughs> like, <laughs> OG Bobby Johnson was simply a disposable pawn. And it's just really sad to see what could happen when you look up to and follow a certain kind of man because you didn't have a father or any type of representation of your own. Now, Bobby comes home not even knowing the name of his son. He is trying his best to give off the same aesthetic to everybody else around him who are in Who Reduce, especially when we get into Ray Ray, who he listens to and looks up to as well as everybody else. But you see right away, Way that he is very much so different from everyone else we meet who are in who reduce he really already at a young age sees something as far as carol having affection for her and his son and really looks forward to the aspects of what they can build as a family and who he can be as a father even though he is trying his best to present himself differently just to be who reduce and look a certain way in front of ray ray who unlike bobby refers to carol and other women repeatedly in the movie movie as bitch you better watch your bitch you be hitting on a bitch like no he never addresses carol in that way he really takes pride in his son and what it means to be a father if you notice as soon as bobby gets out jimmy never leaves his side for one second child they took their baby to the club <laughs> Jimmy was a little bit of everywhere with that sense of protection as a father. Problem is nobody ever showed him how to be a father, how to develop, how to provide. So he continues to follow Ray Ray. And then on the other hand, we have good old Carol. Carol in that yakky number five ponytail that continues every time I watch this movie, continues to piss me off to the highest of pissivity with the ponytail that was just, why? Like, oh, oh, that ponytail just makes me upset every single goddamn time. Like, why y'all sit that on her head? Like, what? Bobby, baby, why you ain't told me you was getting out? I would have done my hair something. Like, ma'am, no. Oh, that, oh, that, that ponytail makes me mad. Carol is such a lost soul from the beginning to the ending of the movie. The fact that I thought for the entire movie that Carol was a full blown adult, no. Carol was supposed to represent teenagers having babies way too early. She already has that deep rooted resentment because I had the baby by myself. Like she had the baby by herself. Like <laughs> I had to go down the county. I had to get one of them checks. You know what I'm saying? Like I was struggling and you were not here for me. So the moment that we have Bobby return and pretty much break his promise again and leaves her alone, we have this cycle of things that continue to repeat not only throughout their family, but the families that came before them, you know, daddy's going to prison, black mothers being left alone to raise their son, and really low key having this deep hatred slash uncaring resentment towards the son because this entire movie, I felt like she associated little Jimmy with Bobby in the way that their relationship went. So she was never really able to care for him as a mother. And not that she wanted to anyway, you see that she is pretty much, you know, trying to recapture. She never really grew up. She's all about being on a go, having fun, 
the gist of her dialogue for pretty much the entirety of this movie is I have to go are we just gonna sit here I need to recapture my childhood my fun she never really grew up so she was never really able to care for Jimmy as a mother in fact when we initially meet her Jimmy is alone Jimmy is alone in the apartment the way that the dynamic of Carol and Bobby's relationship unfolds for the brief moment that we do get them you do get a sense of that maybe Carol is her best self and maybe would have had a grander opportunity if Bobby was really there to help her work through everything but since Bobby wasn't there she is latching on to you know all the men who may smile in her face like Jeannie Lamb or even using drugs like PCP to escape the reality of what's really going on here not being able to see the forest for the trees you know somebody trying to pick you out child she was just lost just looking for somebody to love her looking for someone to love me come on carol with that ponytail oh I'm, 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 I'm looking girl swing that ponytail looking for somebody to love you trying to have a good old time trying to do everything but be a mother because being a mother is a bit too much and being anywhere near jimmy that reminds me of bobby and reminds me that i'm alone and i have nothing and no one what a party at Speaking of Jeannie Lamp, let's get into Ray Ray and how he was using the Kansas City Smack Man to play all up on Bobby's intentions, the way that he felt about what his relationship was with Carol, you know, him bringing in the drugs, giving her the PCP, you know, you better watch her. He, he was like the entire time from day one that Bobby got out, he was planting seeds and creating scenarios to get the outcome that he wanted. And I love that even though Jeannie Lamp was a whole snake all on his own, he saw right through Ray Ray's facade. Ray Ray did not give a damn about anybody but Ray Ray. Ray Ray was all talk, a lot of ego. He was there to command a group of young men. He could rally and recruit a whole bunch of deuces. He's pushing, you know, protection in the neighborhood, unison, growth, money, control, and liberation because, you know, we all know badass Bobby Johnson. We will control the night and all this other bullshit. <laughs> Don't shit go down and let's do say something. Now ain't nobody around this bitch selling drugs to our people but us. What, sir? What did you hear what you said? And <laughs> like, this is gonna be a strong force, you know, organization, but you know, we need to fund everything. So yeah, you tag a corner, you tag a park, and we just gonna be selling crack, but it's just gonna be us. We gotta, you know, eliminate every other independent person around here selling drugs we have to send a message and kill someone why not let it be bobby and genie lamp now even though bobby had his own initial problems with genie lamp ray ray definitely instigated and facilitated this whole situation all of the combativeness and the apartment complex showing up to genie lamp's club of all places continuing to initiate and force this beef because not only did we need to catch a body, but we needed to eliminate all competition. Genie Lamp, what kind of name is fucking Genie Lamp? I love this movie, but a lot of the characters here as well as the acting, sometimes it feels really over the top, really forced, almost giving that after school special ass episode energy. Yeah, Kansas City smack man. And you know, you don't fuck with Genie Lamp. Like everybody's just really, really dramatic. <laughs> but after Jeannie Lamp and his French tips <laughs> forced OG Bobby Johnson to snort some boy, that's all the ammunition that the deuces need for him to catch a body, make a statement for the group, and eliminate some of the action. But was Ray Ray going to be the one to pull that trigger? Absolutely not. The way that the entire group reacts to Jeannie Lamp being shot, you can tell that they have never caught a body before, and this would be a repeat situation for Ray Ray. And just some gang culture as a whole, using more so, you know, the foot soldiers, the ones that you know are eager to prove themselves and give loyalty. The main thing that that OG Bobby Johnson had throughout this entire movie was absolute loyalty and devotion to Deuce. But unlike everybody else in the gang, especially Ray Ray, this wasn't, you know, a move for Deuce. This wasn't, you know, to claim a set. This wasn't to sell some drugs in the community and eliminate everybody else. This was because he felt like he needed to protect himself. And most of all, he was trying to protect Carol. Meanwhile, everybody else is yelling, you don't fuck with Deuce, this is for Deuce. Like, no, I didn't think this was for Deuce. But in the meantime, I got a fucking heart tatted on my face that represents I caught a body like that is the dumb 
dumbest shit in the world to me. Like, if you want to go to jail, just say that. Like, I will never even attempt to understand anybody's gang culture. But wearing a dot on your face that says you killed somebody as a badge of honor is absolutely insane. Like, if you just want to be in the lineup, just get on over there. <laughs> in the meanwhile, while we're supposed to be laying low and taking our frustrations out on this, <laughs> Carol, <laughs> Ray Ray is already reaping all the benefits of, of being King Deuce. Meanwhile, Carol and Bobby are chilling in some type of dilapidated crack house. I don't know. It looked like depression from what I can see. Like, it just, just that house always made me itch. You know what I'm saying? It's not looking good. <laughs> But right before he went to jail, we really do see deep indications that this was no group that you needed to protect or have any real loyalty to. We already have Ray Ray being Ray Ray, but a lot of the focus as far as Bobby is concerned, you know, with protecting somebody really comes down to goddamn Loco in the movie. I never paid attention to just how much Bobby was sacrificing to save Loco, which is a whole enigma in itself. Like, one thing about this this movie though it is great in many ways especially not really glorifying gang culture but giving a whole totally different perspective there are certain moments here where it's just like I really wish somebody else was behind the camera to give you know maybe a little bit more of a realistic perception because when we get into things like you know the potato and the gun you know the silencer you cannot silence a gun with no potato movies it don't work that way <laughs> you know the cops just finding it randomly as evidence you know how easily it was with the writing for you know the prostitutes get, damn for the prostitutes to get into the car yeah we got the 187 we got the drugs we got the crack right here like all, all that extraness like I feel like any real gang like y'all wouldn't have even let a nigga like Loco in it's not like he was straight from the beginning he was always on drugs and I don't see any real gang putting him down when he is such a liability to them from the very beginning you know don't get high on your own supply he wasn't getting high off the crack but he was on that sherm he was on that wet he had to go <laughs> But a lot of scenarios within the movie just depict, um, you know, the gang as a whole, just as really predictable and really stupid in a sense. And I just see a lot of gang culture being a little bit more strategic than, you know, just to pick up, God damn, that's a fine ass bitch. Pick up off the corner, loco. Like, oh, damn. Like, no, nah, we, we really, we were just letting the hoes in the <laughs> pull over. Like, yeah, I, you know, a lot of stuff just, you know, got a little, you know, after school special, but they still get the message across. But after we leave, damn, look at that bitch. <laughs> they got them low. I see a lot of people, a lot of times when they review this movie or just um, talk about Loco's depiction of being on drugs as a whole. They feel like it's a bit much, like he's over the top. Like me, you know, being from the hood. Uh, yeah, I I've seen, you know, some Sherm heads. Like a lot of people react differently. Sometimes, you know, people are, you know, really low. Sometimes, you know, they're sluggish. And then we get into the people who are overly animated. They are hallucinating. They are just off their rocker. Loco Loco is not totally far-fetched like a lot of it is but a lot of it ain't because man like why you in that tree come down nobody's out to get you just come down why you sweating why your eyes red who told you you were superman sit your ass down like why are you so pumped up once we get into the factor of Bobby being arrested and going away for 10 years, we do see that he is not able yet to separate the two and allow the father that he wants to be to his son or just having a son in general trump the loyalty that he has to do. So most of all, Loco, because he was the one giving around all the information for the cootie cattle. We got the crap, we got the drugs. Damn, look at that bitch. Like, oh, he decides. <laughs> The best thing to do is to not only protect Deuce, but protect Loco as well as hit the lights, hit the lights, nigga. Protect Monster. I love so much how in the 90s they were just recycling everybody. Not only do we see hit the lights, nigga, but we see get a little nigga his ball back. Like get a little nigga his ball back is bare. Like they're recycling everybody in the freaking 90s. If you were in one hood movie, you probably showed up in another hood movie playing almost the exact same character absolutely incredible but we have Bobby act like most gang members and continue to hold on to that loyalty that they probably wouldn't give to him in return I don't know about everybody else but the niggas in this movie damn look at that bitch and Ray Ray would have sold him all the way up the river but he felt like what I'm giving out I'm gonna get it back so I can do 10 years it's absolutely nothing in fact we have Ray Ray always rolling around going you know if we go to jail then the dudes will just take over the jail like nigga nigga shut up <laughs> 
But I do love the fact that we see that he still has that deep attachment to his son. He didn't ask for a phone call. He didn't ask for a plea. He didn't ask to call Carol. He asked, is my son still here? I would like to see my son. And then we transition into 10 years and we meet Lil J-Rock. Now the acting in this movie from some of the actors is all around questionable. But when we get introduced to older 10 year old goddamn J-Rock and we get into that little boy's acting like, oh my goodness, it literally turns into a Saturday night after school special. Those goddamn just say no to drugs, ass commercials. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, thanks, Ray Ray. Like, sir, oh, stop. <laughs> we down with 32 most quads. Straight like that, Ray Ray. What? What that deuce like, termite? <laughs> wow, it's Ray Ray and Bear in the fence. What you need, that 187? Show you right. What? Wow, thanks, Ray Ray. Like, oh, God. God. Oh, God. What? did not do terrible but it was like man you know those just say no hey want to smoke some weed weed what's that thanks ray ray like oh okay yeah it, it was very much a product of its time we see that Jimmy is every bit of alone. He has practically raised himself. He does have Carol for a mother and she's still being Carol. But we see that he looks up to the memory of what he feels like his father is. That OG Bobby Johnson who did snitch, got a purple heart, went to jail. He's an OG and we are looking up to somebody like him bear and ray ray he cannot wait to get into the game you can see that he is just lounging around he's not going to school he has absolutely no direction and we can tell right away that if no moves were to be made he was definitely going to end up just like his father or maybe worse off than that what i love a lot about these type of movies that we just get to see how impressionable young boys you know are from maybe the age of eight all the way to freaking 18 they are so ready to dive in and follow somebody that they look up to and most of this comes down to you know them not really having a stable life not really having a father so you're looking up to somebody like Ray Ray thinking that they're going to have your best interest at heart meanwhile they just want you to steal car sounds no Ray Ray get your whole ass out of here Ray Ray meanwhile OG Bobby Johnson has been in prison 10 years straight being loyal as fuck finally combed out them goddamn struggle braids oh my lord it's a snapping turtle like oh them them struggle braids was not doing OG Bobby Johnson any goddamn favors but he finds out in jail what we already know I don't know why based off of American Me <laughs> South Central blood in blood out you being an OG this is an OG call and I'm keeping them you being an OG and having a higher rank means absolutely nothing <laughs> He instantly found out just how disposable he was. As soon as he felt some type of way, you know, J-Rock his star. As soon as he found out J-Rock was his star and J-Rock got shot in the back and he felt like Ray Ray was to blame. Not only that, but this entire time that I have been in here being loyal, holding it down, being deuce, you have been out there being selfish and solely taking care of yourself. You have given 10 years of your life to someone who has no problem using your son to steal for him. I love Willie Manchester. Will Willie Manchester, Willie Manchester was in there trying to get some from Make It Enough. They was in there trying to make it enough with Smokey's mama. <laughs> Keep it warm for me, baby. I'll be back. Like, oh Lord, all of the acting from Willie Manchester, I love. Like, I can't even wait that fucking ending when he's like, you gonna let the old man go and Willie Manchester's like, after school special. Like, sir, sir, just get off the screen. Like right now, please. <laughs> Speaking of bad acting, once we get into the jail and we get into the pure white Aryan brotherhood, the bad acting turns up to about, you know, a 20. Cigarettes, lots of cigarettes, 15 bucks with Aryan interest, motherfucker. Like, sir, so what? Oh, nobody told him to dial that back. Like, uh, just here, we can tell that after this movie, like, these themes of, you know, gang life or the Aryan nation in prison, you know, the Muslims, these have become staples as far as prison hood 
gang ass movies. You're gonna have your Muslim, you're gonna have your pure white Aryan brotherhood up until the point that it was just so saturated that we got movies like Don't Be a Menace, which is a parody, which I love, but the characters got so repetitive and so washed out that it became comical. And once something becomes comical, we absolutely lose the message. And the bad acting does not help here. I want his, I want his dessert. I want his dessert for 15 years, 15 bucks, 17 bucks. Get, get your box head ass up out of my face. Bobby is instantly giving up to the Aryan brotherhood the very second that he is indecisive on whether or not he wants to be down with Deuce. But who he stuck his neck out for, this is an OG call. Not saying that Loco was gonna protect the damn thing, but he was so instantly, gotta go Bobby. <laughs> It's not safe in here. Gotta be like, no, I have to go. I can't put myself out there for you in the way that you had done for me. Which leads it open for Ailee to come through and save him. Ailee is our everyday local Muslim that is in every single prison movie at this point. These characters normally have life. <laughs> They're wise and they're willing to share it. I love this message, but it's so watered down now to the point that it's just like, yeah, all you niggas need to do is read a couple of books and wear some glasses and we can all be better as a people. I'm the, like, oh, okay. They ruined it. After movies like this, they completely made these characters caricatures and we just couldn't take it serious. Like, I hate that we lost the message. I still have it, but a lot of people, when we see characters like this, you're thinking about swine, my brother. <laughs> to remember the cross in the green, never in between. 2000, zero, zero, party, Ooh. Like, <laughs> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Ali blows like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Like, man, y'all just had to fuck it up. And the acting here in this movie does not help. Just because they are trying their hardest to give us after school Saturday night special, even though he is really going out of his way to stick his neck out there to genuinely save Bobby because he sees something in him, we have to listen to a man. Can you not see? that this here is a man. He's a man. I was a man. Oh! 2000 zero, zero party. Oops. <laughs> Although it's extremely watered down now, the message was still here for our leader really come through and have him take some responsibility for what happened to his son. It's not Willie Manchester's fault. It's not, you know, we can't uh, exonerate Carol. <laughs> Because y'all fuck that up together. It's not, you know, Ray Ray's fault. It's nobody's fault but your own. Take some responsibility. When you had the opportunity to just not even be in the situation at all, you wanted to be deuce, Trump to taking care and responsibility for your son. You are not out there to be there for him. But it's all there. You have him as well as the other Muslims not only protect him, but school him in the ways of being a Muslim, getting him to, you know, read, pick up that book, you know, as long as you raise your family, right? You know, me and T just thinking about leaving it all behind, going to Africa, be Africa. Africa's fire. <laughs> the trees was a different color blue because I picked up this book, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's all the layers are there for him to eventually get parole and get out and really help his son. And we get to see just how much somebody like J-Rock needs his father because at the end of the day, he really wants to be nurtured. He really wants to be treated like a child. And we see that when we have Nurse Shelly bring him back to health. Like she's the sweetest little wholesome nurse, just caring person that you would ever want to meet. Oh shit, thanks Ray Ray. I ain't gonna play no hunky ball. Hunky ball is for suckers. School is for suckers. Do like, oh God. <laughs> I got pretty good at honky ball, huh? I'll miss you most of all, Nurse Shelly. Wanna smoke some weed? Oh shit, thanks, Ray Ray! <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, we do see that both Jimmy and Bobby only ever needed to be nurtured and pushed in the right direction by the right person. For Bobby, it was Ali the Muslim, and for Jimmy, for that brief time that he was there, it was Nurse Shelly. We do get to see how they perceive different energies. They have both been idolizing not only Ray Ray, but Deuce as something to look up to, playing that position of father, you know, and Deuce, Deuce is his daddy. Like, absolutely not. J-Rock has an actual father and his name is OG Bobby Johnson. But I do love that they did show that those different types of energy and lifestyles from different people, it's all about perception and all about direction. And you know, Bobby Johnson does a whole 360. He, you know, pats down the fro. 
Yeah. <laughs> he removes, you know, the tap from the face. Like, I'm no longer about that life and I am getting parole. And I also love the message about passing it on. Ali wasn't just about, you know, passing it on. I'm going to, you know, fix you because I don't have a chance. It's like, no, we have to give to each other as a people, as a community. I'm helping you. You help your son and you help somebody else. Like, it's all about paying it forward. Even though we have Jimmy make a turn for a brief second, as soon as he goes to the detention center for boys, it's instantly back to Deuce because out here I'm alone and I have to protect myself. Deuce means something. Who's gonna protect you? Carol's ass? Like, oh, ain't no sense in just staring at him. Maybe I'll come back when he's awake. You know, very much given, you ain't shit, your daddy ain't shit, ain't never gonna be shit, ain't never gonna have shit. Where you going, you little fat fuck? You ain't got jobs. Like, girl, just get out of here, Carol. I love how when we have Bobby get out, she is instantly like in the same place doing the same things 10 years later. Like, oh, I didn't know you was getting out, Bobby. I would've did my hair. Girl, you ain't rolled over in 10 years? Damn! However, Bobby is out with an entirely new perspective, a new agenda, and a new attitude. I just simply want to be a father to my son, but that's easier said than done. I love how they kind of tried to fit in, you know, the, uh, system of uh, once your kid is in the system you know how are you supposed to maneuver getting out as a convict you know do you do permission to be in your children's life stability housing a job it's a whole setup it's just like there are so many obstacles just to do something as simple as get out and be a father to my son but he is not letting those things get in his way up until he actually meets little jimmy jimmy it's me your daddy <laughs> Daddy, you ain't OG Bobby Johnson. We gonna ride out, ride out on Willie Manchester, the fool who gauged me. Thanks, Ray Ray. Like, <laughs> it is not what he thought it was. We have to remember that Jimmy has not been cared for pretty much his entire life. As a baby, like multiple times, he was just in whole ass danger. He has not been nurtured by anybody. He has been raised by Carol for 10 years of his life. It is not looking good. And when I meet you, somebody I have idolized as my dad, you know, Bobby Deuce, you are not who I thought you were. Not only are you no longer that, but you're telling me that it's gonna take a minute for you to even get me out of here. I much rather cut my losses and just bust out of here myself and go join Deuce. I love how we have Carol still with that I gotta go ass energy. She gives Bobby that brief hug and it's just like, they just took him, they just took him, they, they just took Jimmy. It's like, all right, well, I gotta go. <laughs> Carol just did not care. She was too busy being in her own world and not even being an adult and growing up her goddamn self to care anything about her son. So it's pretty much all up to him. Now we end off with the big grand stance of if you hit a man, I'm, I'm just playing. <laughs> in time, his wounds can, no, I'm, I'm just playing. We end off where we, you know, where we know we end off. We end off with Bobby doing what he said he would do, I am willing to put my own life on the line if it means that I am able to protect and save my son. Ray Ray has it all like, oh, Ray was just being so extra about how possessive he felt over Jimmy. Like, this is not your son. But it just goes to show, I think they were trying to drive home the gang mentality of once, you know, whomever, your son, cousin, uncle, brother, they're in that game. Like, it just kind of feels like, oh, you're my property to do with as I feel. And if I say he needs to kill this man, he needs to do that. Because I'm, Deuce is his dad. Like, absolutely, he's not. Like, I love how he tried to sort of kind of suck a Bobby in with, you know, I owe you and this is half yours. It's like, yeah, I don't want to hear any of that shit. I just want my son. Let's all do the, the Willie Manchester face. I just want my son. <laughs> I just want my son. And you know, he has that grand stance with Ray Ray. Once he easily knocks out bear ass, I'm like, you been bear for how many years and you let him take you down with the one, two? Bobby almost has to revert to this is an OG call just to get his son back because we have Ray Ray's extra snake ass. Have Jimmy point the gun at his own father. Jimmy is, you know, really indecisive at this point. You can tell that he doesn't want to kill. I didn't mean to kill that boy. I didn't know that was a boy. He had my car sounds. Like, no, baby, don't shoot me. Keep it warm for me, sugar. I'll be back. <laughs> You can tell that he does not want to kill anybody. And that message that he says, you know, I'm trying to give him something that we never had. 
he deserves a father like don't deny him that just because of how we were brought up and you know all the resentment that you are carrying to make you the snake ass ray ray that you are give me my son he relays the message to him relays that message to jimmy and once jimmy realizes finally there is one person other than goddamn nurse shelly <laughs> who gives a damn about me my father is really here and he does love me so much to the point that he is willing to lay down his life right here and die so this cycle stop this really speaks to the both of them you know we get that nice embrace and then we have thanks ray ray he turns and then she you know the nice little single tear it was really really great you know good acting on glenn Plummer's heart like <laughs> but for once in a hood movie we got a hat i mean what's considered you know a happy ending here and we are leading off with hopes that og bobby johnson will be a great father to his son finally breaking the cycle of everything that had been repeated in his life and his father before him and probably the one before that child lord oh carol said carol said uh -uh, I, gotta, I gotta go i gotta go <laughs> But no cap, this movie is still relevant. I wish that, especially in the climate that we have now and all of the relevancy that we could bring to so many different situations now that we have more movies like this with a direct message speaking to a certain group of people. Like it's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I miss movies like this and I have no problem going back on any given day to watch South Central. Well, you guys, that was my review for South Central. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me if you did. If not, you know, just give me 15 bucks. Like, <laughs> show me some love in those comments. I thank you guys so much for watching this video. I look forward to reading them. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All of that good stuff. I see you guys next time for my next video. Bye.